Hello everyone, this is PK Entertainment and we are back again. And we're going to talk football now and the reflection on the FA Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea. The match just finished about half an hour ago at filming this video. And as usual, when I make these videos, I will be talking about the results and the details of the match. So I always warn you, if you haven't seen the match yet or you don't know the result, stop watching this video now, go back and catch up with the match get the full version or watch the highlights and then come back and watch this video because this will be an in-depth review also if you like the content on my channel if you like the videos that i'm producing please hit that subscribe and like button and help me grow this channel as i progress on through it so now we're going to go on to the match now as i've mentioned before i will be talking about the result so yes a very great victory for arsenal 2-1 win over chelsea overall a very impressive comeback performance all players performing overall very well a few issues at the beginning of the match particularly in the first 15 20 minutes but arsenal regained their composure chelsea started off strong but then arsenal came back into the match and really got a foothold and were kind of dominating especially in the first half so we're just going to go through the events so as i mentioned before first half was a very steady opening both teams were quite even no one was really getting on top of each other there was a few chances for both end-to-end -end stuff Aubameyang had a header I think early on in the first half Pepe was having a couple of shots but there was no real majority dominating performance from either team and then Chelsea got on the ball and I think for me what led to the first goal that Chelsea scored I think it was more poor defending it was well played through the middle of the park involving Mount, Giroud and Pulisic playing nice football playing through Arsenal but they were working their way through the Arsenal defence and nobody within the Arsenal defence was really looking to make a tackle or stick a foot in they were kind of allowing just Pulisic to walk through the heart of the defence and yet played it into Giroud Giroud flicked it through and Pulisic dipped it over the keeper so it was a very good goal for Chelsea but I just think it was very bad defending from Arsenal and at this early stage, Chelsea were looking a much more superior team. They were dominating, they were getting on the ball, they were pressing Arsenal. Arsenal were doing that typical, trying to play from the back of the defence and Chelsea were pressing them and putting under pressure. And then Arsenal started working their way into it. Nate Miles in particular was having good joy on the wings. Chelsea had this strange tactic of try trying to press a very high line. Maybe that was the intention of trying to put pressure on Arsenal as they were trying to play from the back. But they were leaving a very high line. So a lot of space in behind the back. And that's very dangerous tactic. Especially when you've got players with likes of Aubameyang, and Lacassette and Nate Miles, All with a good amount of pace. So that was a very dangerous tactic that I couldn't quite understand why Lampard was adapting. Pepe as well had a great strike. He curled it into the top corner. It was offside because the Bamian was offside. And then shortly after that, another ball over the top. Again, exposing that left wing, that left side for Chelsea playing a high line. Abamian was through and then Asipuieta had brought him down in the box. And again, this exposed that tactic. And yes, it was a penalty. There's no doubt about it. There was no dispute. Abamian dispatches the penalty well far into the far corner it's one of those penalties that even if the keeper dives the right way it's still going to be a goal because it was well taken penalty and then after the penalty Arsenal really started hitting their stride they came back into the game they were having more possession more concentration to the midfield creating more openings and I don't know if maybe Chelsea playing a high pressing game tied them out because they just didn't get on the ball as much they weren't as much as involved and really Arsenal the worst thing that could have happened to them was the first half coming to an end because they were really getting on top of Chelsea Chelsea couldn't get a hold of the ball at all but then yes we got to the second half it was much more of an even game and Pulisic he came off in the second half I think it was his hamstring he was running through and he was looking to play a shot through and if you see in the slow motion replays again as he looks to strike the ball his hamstring it just pulls away just as he looks to strike the ball and then yes he just pulls up and he has to come off and I think that was a telling point because he really was influenced the game Kovacic as well was having a good game as well for Chelsea as well as Anson Mount very influential and very 
positive play from all three of those players. But I think Pulisic coming off, that really took a major threat away from Chelsea. Because where we have Arsenal, they broke up the play and it was Bellerin. He was running through another very good performance in the Arsenal shirt. He ran at the Chelsea defence, it got broken up a bit. It got pushed out wide to Aubameyang and then just great skill when that typical skill that the strikers do when they, they go inside, they shape to shoot and they turn on the outside and he completely sold Zuma, turned on the outside and just dipped it over the keeper, just world class again, just underlying once again his importance within this Arsenal team, whatever contract negotiations that they've got going on here, they have to resolve it and make sure that he signs on a dotted line. I will mention that later on at the end of this video. But yeah, just world-class finish from Aubameyang. Arsenal just coming on the front foot again, just being more consolidated. And I think what was the pivotal moment as well in this match came later on when Kovacic was sent off for his second yellow, another challenge on Zaka. Now, he had an earlier challenge in the first half, but that was a booking. I think nobody could dispute that. He goes in hard, misses the ball completely and crunches into Saka. I don't think anybody could dispute that. But when we look at the second challenge, I look at it again and I don't even think he actually makes contact with Saka. It's one of those where I think the referees looked at it where he's gone in with his studs up. It's not a blatant studs up. I've really seen a lot more horrific challenges in the past, but he goes up slightly with his studs up and he, he almost looks to stamp on the ball and he stamps on the ground and I actually think Zaka kicks against him if you look at the replay again Kovacic goes to challenge the ball studs up stamps on the ground and as he collides into Zaka Zaka kind of shifts the ball and then collides into Kovacic now in real time it looks like Kovacic has actually stamped on Zaka but when you look at the replay again he hasn't I think it's more of a case of Zaka has kicked against him the referees made decision for the second yellow. They said in the BBC commentary that because it was a second yellow, they couldn't take another look at it, like VAR couldn't review it because it was a second yellow and not a straight red. I think that's one of those, maybe next season and beyond, there's one of those rules that they need to revise because I think when you're dealing with a penalty or a sending off, regardless of whether it's a straight red or a yellow, I think it's one of those where VAR needs to check because obviously it's a critical decision. If you take the man off, it's gonna, put the team at a disadvantage so yep yeah, that was a bit unfortunate for them I suppose that Kovacic got sending off along with Apiceta getting injured as well but really once he got them it really was a case of Arsenal were really dominating at this point there was another flash point where I think Rodiger got booked I think there was a clash with Saka and also Arteta came and got booked as well there was a bit of um, arguments between the Arsenal benches and the Chelsea benches but nothing to controversial and then in the second half Chelsea had to chase the game Lampard he brought on Abraham Berkeley and Hodson Adoue and he took off Mount and he took off Giroud as well and I think at that point he was kind of taking off Chelsea's best players at this point and yeah he had to chase the game none of them really made a big impression at all to be honest Berkeley or Abraham didn't do anything at all I think Berkeley he hasn't really made a big impact since signing from Everton and Abraham maybe people have started to find him out a bit. Remember, he was a leading goal scorer. One of the leading goal scorers was, I think was the beginning of this season or last season, he had a great scoring run, but I just think now people have found him out and it hasn't helped that Giroud as well has hit top form and Abraham hasn't really had the chance to get a consistent run of form within the team. But those substitutions really didn't do anything. There was another contentious point when Martinez grabbed the ball. There was a high ball played through. Abraham was running onto it. Martinez grabbed the ball. On the first instance, it did look like he grabbed the ball outside the box. I mean, I looked at it and I felt, why is he coming out of it? He could have just let the ball run through, shielded himself and then picked the ball or kicked it out for a throw in or a corner. He didn't really need to come out for it. But they showed the replay again and whether it was clever or whether it was just lucky, Martinez has turned his body and his hand as he's caught the ball is actually in line with the 18 yard box line. So I think it was more fortunate and lucky rather than him being very skillful about it. I think it's one of those where, you know, you get away with it. And Martinez, we have to say, and I've said this in other Arsenal match reviews, he has performed very well. 
since Leno got injured. Every every Arsenal fan was worried. What are we going to do about goalkeeping position? But Martinez has proved to be very confident, very decisive when he's coming for crosses, coming for corners. More than not, he doesn't make many mistakes. He normally makes the right decision. So he performed very well. And I also have to give a very special mention to David Luiz. Now, we all know David Luiz will always have these defensive lapses even before he joined Arsenal. He had plenty of them when he was at Chelsea, despite the fact he was kind of in the defence then got shoved into the midfield. But today he was absolutely spot on. He completely negated Giroud, who has been the biggest informed striker for Chelsea, certainly for the last four or five games. But Giroud barely had a touch. Louise was always on him, he was close on him, didn't give him any time on the ball, was always challenging him in the aerial threats that were appearing from Giroud, and Giroud just couldn't make any impact on the game and that was a lot down to Luis able to just control him and keeping him in his back pocket so we do have to give a special mention for David Luis as well I thought Zaka and Tobias they performed also very well in the middle of the park Holden was very solid at the back didn't really have too many threats or concerns to worry about in particularly the second half he was just there being very resolute um, Bellerin and Tioni again they've continued their good form on the wings on there I know Bellerin has had a lot of criticism of the fans he's had a couple of outspoken statements like over the year or two about the fans and the Arsenal fan TV but he has performed very well in the last couple of weeks and Tioni has shown good consistency as well so they performed very well and despite the fact that Lacazette didn't score I always rate Lacazette because of his work rate and I think He's one of those strikers that needs the service. If you can give Lacazette better service, then he can score goals for you. But he worked very hard, worked very tired for the team. And I think Arteta appreciates that. And I think that's why he's getting picked more in the first team than what Lacazette was under Amory. And as I mentioned before, we do have to come back to the main man. The main man, the main striker, Aubameyang. He, he is without question the top guy at Arsenal. We can't dispute that. He is the most special player at Arsenal. He's the critical player at Arsenal. They have to do everything they can to make sure they sign in. I have remarked in the past about how Arsenal have always fallen victim to the superstar player complex. You know, we've had this in the past with Van Persie, Fabregas, Sanchez, Ozil. You know, we've always felt burdened by the superstar player as if if they don't sign a contract, everything's going to fall apart. Now. This is a job that Arteta has got to do in the future for next season. He's got to make sure that the strength of that team and the strength of that squad are so that you're not relying on just one player. But for now, we have to realise that Aubameyang is very important to that team. Whatever negotiations they're going through, whatever contract debates they're having, they've just got to make sure that they look to appease him and compromise with him as much as they can and make sure he's there at the beginning of the next season it could be just down to the fact that maybe a Bamian wants Champions League football or he wants more money but for me I just think you have to just pay you have to just pay if you're willing to pay Mesut Ozil 300 grand a week for not even putting him in the squad then surely you've got to at least match that for a Bamian who's not only in the squad he's not only in the first team but he's scoring critical goals and producing critical performances for you now we have to bear in mind if you look at overall season there are games certainly against the bigger teams that Aubameyang does go missing sometimes so he's not the absolute perfectionist of a player but he is very important to Arsenal I just think they have to do whatever they can to make sure he signs an extension to his contract so I'll also leave the last mention of course for Mikel Arteta now when he joined Arsenal for the first time my initial reaction was that I didn't believe he was the right man for the job not because I'd had anything personal against Arteta I just think for the current state the current mess that Arsenal was in that you really need a, a manager of a vast experience to be able to come in quickly address the deficiencies within the team and sort the team out I was very angry when I saw Ancelotti go into Everton because I think Ancelotti is somebody that could have gone to Arsenal now Despite the victory today, I'm still thinking that maybe we do need some of more experience. But what this victory has done today, it's given Arteta a rise in his stock now. He took over from Arsenal, what, December, barely six months ago. Everything was a complete mess. 
left under Amory, just people, the, the team were in terrible form, people were unsure of who was wanting to stay at the club, who was wanting to leave the club. He had very little experience, of course, and he had to come in and gain the respect of the board and the players if he wanted to progress as Arsenal manager. And what this win does is giving him money in the bank now. He can now go to the board and say, look, I've come over, I've took on over this team, barely six months it was a mess we've had the whole delay with COVID-19 and still I've ended up producing a trophy win and getting you into European qualification for next season now that's a great turnaround for any manager whether you're a new manager whether you're an old manager right that's a great turnaround so now he has got some leverage when he wants to go to the board and ask them for sufficient funds to go and get the high caliber players that's required to take on Arsenal further for next season so I hope now when we go forward for next season now he does get the funds he does get the financial backing from the club and then we can start looking for some high caliber defensive players some high caliber defensive midfielders to make sure that we're solid at the back so we don't get overrun by teams especially with set pieces and big physical teams that look to play the long ball behind us if we can get a solid foundation at the midfield and at the back and we can retain a Bamian and still keep playing like I said like I said because I think if you keep giving like I said more service he can produce your goals for you so if we can have that set up, then I think there's potential for Arsenal to push forward for next season. I'm not in any way saying that they're going to go ahead now and start challenging for the Premier League next season. I think that's an unrealistic expectation for even the most optimistic of Arsenal fans. But I just think if he can get the back in next season, then maybe Arteta can start to create some potential for positive things for the team going forward. We've got the likes of Saka and Ketier and also Pepe, who had a very good game today, Pepe, I thought. He was very threatening on the ball, lots of dribbling, driving the ball forward. He still checks inside a bit too much for me. I think maybe Arteta needs to play one in left wing and try and push him more to drive more at defenders, use his pace, use his skill and really look to progress the attack forward for Arsenal. But yeah, he was delivering very dangerous balls and he's got a wicked left foot. So hopefully now I want to see more goals from him and more consistency going forward for next season. So overall, a very great performance from Arsenal, a great result from Arsenal. That is the 14th FA Cup victory now. I think that's the most now amongst any teams within the history of Arsenal. And it emphasises more because for all the upheaval and for all the kind of disarray and the distortion and the, the toxic debate Arsenal still producing these trophy wins every couple of seasons and they've done this again this season so I think it's a great achievement for the club it's a great standalone achievement for what they've done today but we do have to keep our expectations in check and realise there's still a big massive job to be done there before we can get anywhere near to where we were 10, 12, 11 years ago when we were, you know, the top teams and we were challenging for the Premier League and Champions League consistently year in, year out. But overall, a great result, a great win for Arteta. Well done to him. Masterclass from Obamian. Please make sure that the club do anything they can to make sure they retain his services. Give Arteta the financial backing for next season so we can go out and get strong defenders and strong midfielders and hopefully Arsenal can make a progressive push next season. So those are my thoughts on the FA Cup victory for Arsenal against Chelsea. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think this is a springboard now for Arsenal that can go on and produce greater things next season? Or do you think this will possibly be a flash in the pan and things may go back to where they were when we were struggling for next season? Because Arsenal have had cup wins before. They've had league wins or FA Cup wins before and they've never really built on it in the future. It's just kind of papered over the cracks. That can't happen. We've got to look to progress and carry on in the future for next season. So those are my thoughts for now on the FA Cup final between Arsenal and Chelsea. Let me know what you think in the comments below. As I mentioned before, please press those subscribe and like buttons and help me to grow this channel. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves. Stay at safe distances. Well done to Arsenal. And I will see you very, very soon.